The Amazing Spider-Man Suit. Probably one of the most controversial Spider-Man suits to this day. The suit is edgy, with a basketball-like texture, yellow eyes, and a complicated web pattern. But I'm not here to talk about the controversy surrounding this suit. I'm here to ask the question, how the hell did my guy Peter Parker make this suit? This suit is depicted in the movie as homemade, and the filmmakers were really trying to make it seem like something someone could actually make. We were trying to create a suit that felt somewhat legitimate in terms of this kid could make it, and we spent some time developing the ideas behind that. But the sad truth is no. This suit is very difficult to make. And to prove it, I will be going over the process I went through to create the Tasm Suits mask. Materials include a red spandex mask, whether it is made from scratch or a bot mask. Personally, I prefer sewing one by hand. A mannequin head, two to three bottles of red puff paint. Go for a deep red shade because there are actually two different shades you may come across, which I learned after using both shades on my mask. So look out for that. One bottle of black puff paint, scissors, blue foam, PC fan mesh, plasti dip, a glossy navy blue spray paint, and a metallic gold spray paint, Gorilla Glue, a thin and thick Sharpie, a washable marker, and some chocolate milk to keep yourself sane. Before we go over how to make the mask, I wanna let y'all know most of the video will contain progress pictures because at first I wasn't originally going to make a video until I realized I hadn't posted in a while. So yeah, that's why you don't get to see me spray liquids everywhere. Wait a minute. The first step is to figure out where the webs go and how to apply them correctly. What I did first and what I suggest y'all do as well is cut small eye holes so you know where your eyes are located on the mask and so you don't apply the webs in the wrong spot. Speaking of which, the web pattern on my mask isn't 100% accurate to the one in the movie. That is because there's a segment in the shape of a V between the webs on both sides. For a while, I thought it was just there because of the way the mask was sewn together until I played Spider-Man Remastered where it has the same design detail. So I was pretty much screwed there. Mistakes aside, before applying the webs with a thin Sharpie, you should use a washable marker as a base so you know where the webs should go. After adding the Sharpie webs, you're going to dip your mask in water to remove the marks left from the washable marker. Let you, the mask sit for a while until it's dry. Now that the Sharpie webs are on the mask, it's time for the honeycomb pattern, AKA Satan himself. I'm not kidding when I say this is the most annoying and time consuming part of this entire process. <laughs> Before I get ahead of myself, let's discuss what to do before applying the honeycomb pattern with the red puff paint. So on the Tasm costume, it seems there's a black pattern underneath the screen printing with the red honeycomb pattern. With that information, I decided to replicate that onto my mask. I basically covered the entire mask with black lines in between the web pattern. After that tedious task, we can get on to the main event, the hell that has consumed me. The process that has made me want to snap my neck. The honeycomb pattern. What do you mean honeycomb pattern? Those aren't honeycombs. Those are just circles. And where's your web pattern? Huh? Why can't I see it? B because... <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, the honeycomb pattern is going to be covering the entire mask. So I highly recommend you get a mannequin head to put your mask on so it stretches when the puff paint is applied, resulting in an easier time putting on the mask and taking it off, and a lower chance of the puff paint cracking. Took me about a week and a half to apply all of the red puff paint with hours upon hours, just waiting for the paint to dry. It tends to take about four to six hours for the puff paint to dry. I ended up using circles over hexagons due to the thickness of the tip of the bottle, so it's not really a honeycomb pattern, but honestly, I don't care. It's accurate enough for my liking. After the last of your honeycomb pattern becomes dry, we can move on to the final part of the mask, the puff painted webs. The puff paint will likely go onto the mask the same way as the Sharpie webs. The only difference is you should be careful when applying the puff paint, or you could accidentally smudge bits of paint all over the mask, and make sure to let your paint dry after application. 
Now that we're done going over the making of the mask, that just leaves us with the lenses. So in the movie, Peter created his lenses with the use of sunglasses so it can be more realistic. But I don't feel like going through the process of hacking up and sawing through some sunglasses, so I went with my trusty PC fan mesh and foam. If you've seen any of my other videos, you probably know how this part of the tutorial goes, but in any case, you are stupid and haven't seen one of my other videos. Come on, bro, what are you doing? I'll just do it again, cause I'm just like that, you know? So first you draw out your template and then cut it out on a piece of paper. Here's my template if you're too lazy to do it yourself. Next thing to do is the same thing twice on the foam. Make sure to keep the pieces that were cut out of the foam before spray painting, what I did was use my hair dryer on the foam while on the top of my mannequin head so they curve, allowing them to sit better on the mask and also so the paint doesn't crack on the foam. When spray painting, I suggest using two to three coats of Plastidip before spraying about one to two coats of the navy blue spray paint. While the frames dry, you should spray paint your PC fan mesh with the gold spray paint. After the mesh finishes drawing, use the pieces you cut out of the frames from earlier to trace around the mesh and leave a little gap between the foam and your traced line. Then you cut them out and glue them to the back of your frames. After you finish your lenses, wrap a plastic bag around your mannequin with some duct tape to keep it secure. Put your mask over the mannequin head so nothing get, will get stuck to the inside of the mask and then apply the glue to the back of your frames of your lenses. Once the glue is added, put the lenses onto the mask and wait for a couple of hours until it's dry. My lenses came out a little slanted, but it's not too noticeable, so I'm fine with it. And yeah, that is your completed TASM Spider-Man mask. Finally, we've made it to the end of the video. This video and this mask was a blast to make and I really hope you enjoyed it. In the end, this mask has taught me that there is no way Peter Parker would spend this much time to make his Spidey suit or his mask. I know I haven't posted in a while and I apologize for that. Going forward, I don't know if I'll be uploading as frequently as I used to, but who knows really. If this video does do well, however, and if enough people want it, I'd be happy to tackle the Sam Raimi Spider-Man mask. If you're a fan of Spider-Man and are a fan of cosplay in general, you could subscribe if you would like. Also, shout out to Boy on the Internet. He's got some cool stuff on his channel, so be sure to check him out as well. Anyways, thank you all for watching. See ya.